So here are the points to note about mining allowance. So points to note. One, that it is granted in mining only. That you only grant the mining allowance if you are doing mining. So if you are doing any other business, don't even claim the mining allowance. And that means, for example, if you are doing farming, you cannot claim mining allowance. If you are doing manufacturing, you cannot claim mining allowance. Like in manufacturing, we saw you can only claim investment deduction. In, manuf uh, in farming, we are going to see farm work allowance. So it's only granted in mining. Two, it is granted at the rate of 50% in the first year. Of use and then 25% reducing balance. This is 25% reducing balance from the second year. On qualifying costs. So that reminds us of what we said about investment deduction, the concept we apply in investment deduction. So when you determine the cost that qualify for mining allowance, first year claim 50% deducted against the taxable income of first year. When you go to the second year, 25% but on a reducing balance. It means that you take the original cost minus the mining allowance of the first year. So whatever you get, 25%. Then you go to the second year, another 25% of original cost minus mining allowance of the second year, minus mining allowance of the first year and the second year. So whatever you get there, another 25%. So you continue that way. And as long as you're using an item in the business uh, of mining, you continue claiming the, the mining allowance. But the question is, what are the qualifying costs for mining allowance? So we have the point number three. Qualifying costs. So what are the costs that normally qualify for mining allowance? We have number one, research, testing, and mineral access costs. That in the process of mining, you may need to do a research to know, for example, the quality of minerals that are deposited, to know the quantity of minerals that are somewhere before you start mining. You may start mining and then realize that, well, the quantity is too small. It will become a not viable. So in that case, you need to do some research. You test for the quality and then you access the minerals. For example, you drill a hole, a well, that can assist you to access those minerals. All those costs normally qualify for the mining allowance. Then we have two, we have buildings used in mining and which will be of little value. if mining stops. Now, there are those buildings that are constructed at the mining site which are purposely to assist in mining. And if you are to stop mining, then you cannot use this, those buildings again. So those are the ones that you are saying they qualify for mining allowance. But if a building can be used for another purpose other than that mining uh, process, then it won't qualify for the mining allowance. So examples of this building are, are like which one? So i.e. we have the staff quarters. We have the offices. We have staff clinics. Uh, we have the staff uh, canteen. ETC. As long as it's a building that assists for the mining to start and continue, then it qualifies for mining allowance. Then we have the third one, costs 
to acquire rights on minerals. Now, what normally happens according to the rules of Kenya is, it is usually assumed all minerals, all the natural resources belong to the government. So even if you have land somewhere which have gold, you cannot start mining that gold until the government give you the permission to do that because it is the sole owner of those minerals. So for you to get that government right, you normally pay for it. Usually government tell you to pay for license. So that license is the right you are acquiring to start mining. So the cost of that license will now be used to claim the mining allowance when you are determining the taxable income of them of the business. Number D, we have machine used in mining. These are machines that are purposely for mining to drill and maybe extract the minerals. Those also qualify for mining allowance. And then we have the last one, costs incurred before mining start. So the key thing here being the cost incurred before mining starts. And you need to know what are those costs. Uh, you normally find before you start mining, maybe you had some consultant. So you paid consultants a fee. You had a person who managed your work, your resources before you start mining. Management fee is paid. So all these costs, as long as they are relating to the period before you start mining, they qualify for mining allowance. So that means that how about those costs that you incur after you start mining? Those do not qualify for mining allowance. What we normally do, if they are revenue, we normally take them to the income statement when you're getting the taxable income. For example, you pay consultancy fee and you have already started mining, then that will go to the income statement when you're determining the taxable income as an allowable expense. But as long as it's before mining, then you give it the mining allowance. So that is the point number three about mining allowance, costs that qualify for mining allowance. Then we have point number four that you need to know about mining. Four. That cost of land and land related costs do not qualify for mining allowance. That you may find that where you start mining. Maybe you purchase that land so that, you know, it had minerals so that you can start extraction. That cost of land, when you're claiming mining allowance, don't give it mining allowance. Not only that, when you're acquiring that land, like you may incur title processing fee, legal fee, what we call conveyance fee, all these, ones, as long as they are related to land, do not give them the mining allowance. Actually, we take note that land doesn't qualify for any capital allowance. Whenever you see it, don't give it. And why is it that we don't usually give land any capital allowance? Because when you talk of capital allowance, it is usually used to take care of loss or value of an item as you use it in the business. But you normally find that land is always there. You purchase it from somebody, you use it, one day maybe you'll transfer it to somebody else and the process continues. So land is always there. And actually most of the time, land appreciate in value. So we don't usually give it any capital to allowance. So for the mining allowance, it ends there. That is what you need to know about it.